up our series on the restaurants, which earned a prestigious five-star rating from the Boston Globe, continues. With a local mainstay that's drawn seafood lovers for five decades, the Daily Catch, whereas the Globe's Deborah first writes, consistency is especially along with Sicilian-style seafood and pasta. The original location on Hanover Street in the North End is known for giving guests an intimate dining experience where you can watch the chef flame your food just feet away from your table. And there are a couple of more locations by the waterfront and in Brookline. Joined by executive chef Basil Fredora and general manager Louis Fredora. Their father opened the first location in 73, back when it was known as the Calamari Cafe. Great to see you guys. Thanks so much for being you here. As well. Congratulations, be here. How Thank many you. siblings are there? Seven total. How many boys? Seven boys. Seven out of seven. And you're two of the five. Does everybody get along? Well, we have to. But it took you a while for to answer that question. Yeah. Do and everybody's in the business, is that right? Yeah, more or less. Doing what like what do you do? I'm the general manager at the uh, waterfront location. And how about you? I pretty much do it all. It, what does that mean? Well, you know, for years I was the chef at our locations, and um, now I run our wholesale operation and just keep the restaurants, you know, well-oiled well -oiled machine. You know, uh, I'm a tad older than both of you, and the Calamari Cafe was in 1973 it opened. Calamari, when I, in 1973, to me was squid and almost nobody ate squid. So the conventional wisdom is your family sort of invented calamari. You hear that a lot, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our father's nicknamed the Calamari King. He is. Yeah. And what, what, what drew him to this, by the way? Wasn't it seen like as a bait fish and that sort of thing? Yeah, it was that more of a- That many years ago? It was a bycatch mostly. Uh, nobody was necessarily eating it, especially not in restaurants. It was more of a fisherman's food. And what all of a sudden, what caused it to catch on? What do you think? What does your father say? Why do people all of a sudden start eating something, the name of which they hadn't even heard of much before? Well, my, our father's an opportunist. And back then, <laughs> fried clams were through the roof, the price. Yeah. And he saw calamari uh, was just bycatch. So he was able to, you know, bring Sicilian-style recipes and apply it to the calamari. When you guys were, when the seven of you, the seven boys in the family were little kids, were you saying, I want to grow up to be in this business? Or were you saying to yourself, I want to get away from this. I love my family, but I got to do something else. What were you no, saying? No, we were all raised in this. You know, it's in our blood. Um, it's what we grew up doing. And uh, at least I speak for myself, love doing it. You know, I'm, while I'm talking to you, I'm pretending like I'm not eyeing, one eye looking at you, one eye looking at maybe <laughs> the prettiest dish of any. What is this thing right here? That's the black pasta alio olio. olio. And you, is this squid uh, uh, pasta or what is it? Yeah, that's a, it's a black pasta made from squid ink and with ground calamari, olive oil, garlic. That is unbelievable. Can I take a taste of this while yeah, we're doing this? Yeah, go for it. And yes. how rude is it that I'm going to eat out of a pan that probably my coworkers all Is that okay? <laughs> that's how we all do yeah, it. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So we have a photo of you, Basil. How many kids are named after spices, by the way? Well, so it's me and my brother, Sage. Sage. <laughs> And do you feel left out in that, or no? Or no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy not being named after an herb. Like turmeric, or it yeah. just wouldn't yeah, work out? time would have worked out, You've I never guess, heard that but... line before, have you? I'm yeah. sure you, of course you haven't. So there's a picture of you standing by a pot of the legendary sauce. We're going to put that up in a minute. What makes it so different and so much better than almost everything else? It just comes down to using quality ingredients and simplicity. Oh my you know, God. A, as all of our recipes, um, you know, we, we use the highest quality ingredients and just cook them simply and let the ingredients speak for themselves. How long does that sauce cook? The tomato sauce? Yeah. 24 hours. 24 hours. And could you explain to a lay person like me what is different, let's say, than tomato sauce that cooks for four hours? Why is it so much richer? And so our sauce, we simmer in with oh lobs lobster bodies and live crabs. And so letting it just cook for 24 hours just takes that essence. You know, also, my understanding is there are a ton of people who were, I mean, beyond the seven brothers involved in this thing, the whole family, you have a lot of workers, employees who've been with you forever. Am I pronouncing it right, Jimmy Whim? Is that how you pronounce the chef? Well, we call him Jimmy Lee. Uh, Jimmy Lee. How long has Jimmy Lee been there? Longer than me, that's for sure. 40 years, right? Just about. What's that about, do you think? He loves it. He I mean, loves it. Jimmy Lee is, uh, I, I can't say enough good things about Jimmy. You know, he, he's worked for our parents longer than both of us have been alive. Mm -hmm. And um, he's just a machine. It's like know? a family, like the eighth brother kind of thing. I mean, like an uncle, mm -hmm. you know, and um, he's still going. 
So what's with, I think most people that go to your places for the first time, the thing that stands out, I think, is the pan deal as opposed to a dish. What's the genesis of that? Where'd that come from? So the pan came from out of necessity, really. You know, um, you know, when my father opened the restaurant, it wasn't like this vision he had to like create this restaurant. It was, let's start cooking some food, and we'll start frying it, and we'll start sautéing it, and doing the pasta, and I got nothing to put the pasta in. So we'll just give him the pan. And that's how it all started. And people would be disappointed if this wasn't the way it happened, right? They come to us to eat out of that pan. I love, I love that. Tell us what, tell me what these two things are here. What is that? There we have a marinated calamari salad and then a Sicilian style octopus as oh, well. Oh, jeez. And, and what, oh, well, this is what version of the kind of bite of this church? Yep, that's the octopus there. And wh where do people get that? Where do people get that? So these are some items that we sell in the restaurant and also available through our website, thedailycatch.com, uh, especially for the holidays. It's a great item, you know, for Feast of the Seven Fishes or anytime you got a hankering for, you know, some, some local Boston seafood. Do all the seven boys love this food, I hope? Oh, absolutely. Do they really, or you just have to say that? No, it's I not mean, one I... of them that said, I'm sick of this, I've been eating this for 33 years, I don't want it anymore. I can't get How enough How about of Sage? It. What does Sage think about that? Do we know? He I think, loves it. I think, the, color, love it? I think the color oh, he loves it more than favorite. anybody. <laughs> What is, I, I know that's a meatball. I don't embarrass that is myself. Obviously, I, what kind of meatball is it? I would say it is a. It is a, one guess. A calamari meatball. Great guess. It is a good guess? Perfect guess. Thank you. And how exactly do I do that? Can I just take a bite of that doing this yeah, kind of thing? Yeah. Just, how did you guys, by the way, it, one, I assume, I'm guessing almost everybody watching the show has been to one of your places, probably the North End. It's small, which is one of the great parts. Of course, you can't get in. I mean, you got, it's a really tough thing. How did you guys get through the COVID deal? Well, we stayed open. You know, um, that's hard with limited capacity. As much as we, Wasn't that yeah, as much as we could with the restrictions. You know, um, social distancing didn't exist in our restaurant. Uh, we put curtains up, and we we evolved based on as as the restrictions evolved. Is your father surprised? I mean, is the whole family surprised about how huge this has become? I mean, it, it, it it's a big. I mean, I know you know this is a really big deal. I mean, outside the family, he wants it to be bigger. He does? What does that mean? What's he looking at? More locations, just more More calamari. calamari. Yeah. And, and I assume the answer to my next question, why he wants to do that, is because he wants to spread the beauty of the cuisine to as many people as possible. But it, what, what is the deal? What, what's his motivation? Why does he want to keep whole, doing? Yeah, his motivation has always been about the calamari. He really wanted to just bring calamari to the masses. Back in the 70s, through the 80s, into the 90s, through the 2000s, now where we are now. And and our, our mission statement hasn't changed. It's to just bring the calamari to the masses. You know, uh, uh, the thing that I'm always amazed by when, I mean, I know you guys go to the fish piers and everything's fresh and everything's local, and I love that whole thing. I think everybody loves the whole image of that thing. But a lot of other places that do a variation of what you do, they go to the fish piers in the morning. They get the same fresh product but I think it's fair to say, without disparaging anybody, a lot of them don't generate the same outcome that you do. So why is that, do you think? Well, so we actually have a facility on the fish pier where we process all of our own seafood. We fillet all of our ground fish. We clean all of our calamari. It's all done in-house by these hands, literally these hands. And um, it just creates such a unique seafood. It's just handmade food. You know? Can you name all seven brothers without thinking, just saying them quickly? Go, go, go. What, who are they? Max Basil, Theo Sage, Sebastian, Lewis, Dominic. So I guess the answer is yes, you can do that? Is Max that Basil, Theo Sage, Sebastian, Lewis, Dominic. I guess you can. So does it make it there when the Globe says you're one of the five stars? I think it's great what they did. They decided not to rate restaurants during the pandemic because obviously it was a nightmare for a lot of, not, I mean, everybody had a nightmare through this thing and come out with this beautiful notion, let's rate the best. What does it do for a place like yours when a place is packed all the time? What's the, What's the impact of something like that? Well, I think it sparked uh, the Daily Catch memory in a lot of our customers' minds that hadn't necessarily been able to eat with us okay. over the past few years. And so it was, it, it reimagined that memory of theirs and brought them back. Can I tell you, I want to say, for the th this is one of the best things I ever ate in my life. And it's also one of the prettiest things I ever ate in my life. Thank you. And while it's great to meet both of you, can you please say hello to Sage? Who are the other four? Max, Theo, Dominic, and Sebastian. And Sebastian. Sebastian. All seven, five of them. Will you say hi? Pleasure to meet you. Congratulations yeah, on the five star. Send it to your father, too. Thanks. Pleasure, Jim. Oh, well, drink the wine after the show. Yeah, Forgot about that. We have to. Great to see you both, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.